hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today we're jumping into some nuclear revenge. Our first story today comes to us from Throwaway 2021-1250. He scoffed at me, so I got him fired and sent back to his country. Let's jump right in. So let me preface this by saying I do feel somewhat bad about the events that transpired, but it would be eating my conscience to say I didn't do it on purpose because I did. I started my first full-time job when I was 20, fresh off college and ready to take on the world. I resided in a Middle Eastern country where people got brought in frequently by employers and one mistake could cost them everything. I was outside this because I was a resident of the place despite not being from there. Anyways, when I first started, I got along very well with my coworker, despite the fact that he came off as a lot of bad things for me. We tried hanging out, but the more I got to know him, the more disgusted I became. He was sexist, a purist of his religion, where he believes execution of certain people should be allowed, and he was extremely homophobic. But nonetheless, I tried making friends with him because I was open to anything. In our office, we have a portable Wi-Fi that he took with him every day, free internet. And I never commented on this because I have my own, I can't afford it, and so can he, more on this later. The closer I got to him, the more he opened up, but in the worst ways. He would send me lewd images while we're in the office of women, talk about drug use, and sometimes disappear from work for hours on end while I man the office. Like I said, I was 20, I was still young and naive, and I tried my best to seem calm and friendly. I wanted to make an impression. This man, however, was the opposite. He was several years older than me and acted like he was above me through every step. But I ignored it because I wanted to be civil. Sometimes I would help him with his work until eventually his work became mine. He would just expect me to do it without even lending a hand. I didn't say anything, I just did it. His being missing from the office became more frequent. Sometimes he would only be at work for a measly two hours out of nine hours, popping in and out, and the office manager is too chicken crap to say anything to the general manager. Then there's the lateness, where I would come in on time every day, and he'd come in an hour late. Still, I kept my mouth shut. It escalated to him adjusting attendance records, so it seems like he's not absent even though his absences were frequent. Unfortunately, he was put in charge of that too. I remained quiet throughout all of this. I remained civil, until finally I spoke to the general manager about pursuing a different line of work. I was always into graphic design, and they needed to get some work done, so I offered to do it. But during this time, I couldn't afford much things anymore because I had to help pay for bills for my parents. So I usually just walked to work back and forth every day and limited my eating to once a day, meaning the Wi-Fi was no longer something I could afford. So as an agreement, I could take the office Wi-Fi with me and work on designs from home. However, my coworker didn't agree to this and pretty much attacked me with a barrage of insults. He scoffed at the fact that I needed the Wi-Fi to do design work and said I was a joke. I suppressed majority of what the conversation held, but it went something like this. I just need it tonight. You can have the Wi-Fi tomorrow. Why? It's not yours. I need to do some design work. Yeah, me too. I need to do that too. So leave it here. I couldn't remember much of what else he said, but there was a scoff after he said that, and he made fun that my design sucked and that I should just stop while I'm ahead. My blood boiled and I reached a point of no return. I immediately phoned the office manager and talked about the situation and how if I don't get the Wi-Fi, I'll complain to the general manager who did in fact give me his blessing unlike this turd. He immediately called my coworker and told him to give me the Wi-Fi, which he did and that was that. Except I'm a petty person and I'm not about to let some butthole get off with a slap on the wrist. The next day I went to the head office and had a meeting with the general manager. I spoke to him about all the misconducts this guy had, how he's always late, never in the office, changes his absences, steals money sometimes, etc. I spilled my heart out on all his wrongdoings, showing the messages and photos I was sent during shift that I never asked for, and how I'm doing all of his work. 
it escalated to a point where he got brought into the main office for a meeting, where I proceeded to berate him in front of the manager, and he could only try to defend himself, but I was prepared. It turns out, the office manager never even spoke to the general manager about his misconduct. Afterwards, he was brought back to the office, having been yelled at by both my and the general manager. And I could say that's where it ends, except it's not. After he left, the general manager realized if I had been doing all the work, then why didn't I say anything? I responded that I was simply there to work and to help. However, with what just happened and the fact that this guy was getting paid more than me, I've decided that if he's here, then I won't be staying in the company. I gave him a choice, me or this guy. The answer was obvious because by the next day, he was handed a termination letter and another letter that states he's been booked a ticket and he has to head back to his home country within a month and he's barred from entering the country for several years due to his public misconduct that was reported by a certain someone to the local authorities. I could say that's the end, but okay, this is the last one I swear. See, he had a girlfriend back home, a fiancé more like, whom he has been cheating on. Funny enough, he added me on Facebook when we first met, and she proceeded to add me too, because he talks about me to her. Well, our messages weren't just inappropriate. It showed details of him cheating on her, with me questioning him if that's a good idea. Every screenshot sent. All the photos of the woman he's been with sent. She was livid, and I kept apologizing for keeping her in the dark, but that I thought she deserved to know at least. I haven't spoken to her since, but judging from the fact that her Facebook status no longer states she's engaged to him is enough of a confirmation. I sent him one last thing before blocking him on every social media we've been connected in. You deserve this, craphead. It's been several months since then, and I'm thriving at work. I got a raise, I have better co-workers, and I'm getting a promotion. As for him, well, he's out there somewhere in the world, who knows, and who cares, right? We're no longer in the same country, so whatever else happens to him no longer phases me. Though, he did once send me a photo of his fake Italian ID because he was planning on illegally migrating there next year. I'm on the fence if I should send it to the authorities in Italy or not. Just as a precaution, I might consider migrating there at some point. OP, I don't think you should do anything about the ID right away. What you should do is make a fake profile for a female and friend him on it. And then, if he moves to Italy, alert the authorities after he moves there and include his location. That would be the ultimate revenge. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our second story today comes to us from Brooke Hall. Try to end my life? Become homeless, B. Let's jump right in. To be blunt about this, I don't know what r slash this fits in. It's revenge, but I don't know if it's petty, nuclear, or what, or if it even fits in entitled parents, but I picked here, and I might, did, it was in petty first, cross post it if it doesn't fit. Not saying we all have any, but I personally have a terrible mother. So bad, she's been in the local newspaper for being a prick twice. Some might blame this all on the fact that she's a drug addict, but even when she wasn't, when it was clear she wasn't on drugs, she was a C and a slippery little one too. So you get that she's a B, but let's go back to the beginning, the way beginning of her being one. I was eight or nine, maybe I needed to be punished, I don't remember or care, and she sent me to the corner. I felt whatever I did she could live with, and I guess that was my mistake, and I did pay for it, she was yelling at me when I wasn't in the corner and shaking me. I didn't want her touching, so I resisted. This made her mad, so she picked me up and threw me. A young kid that probably accidentally broke a lamp or took a quarter from a jar she had hidden at a wall, leaving a crater and probably giving me a concussion. Effing heck. Flash forward to when I'm 13 and when a lot of this next crap happens, in which I'll boil the worst parts down. We moved to a city with cool lift locks, decent secondhand game shops, antique stores, and a junior hockey team called the Peets. We live in an apartment, and the jackbutt mother meets an impressionable man around her age. We all go, he's not bad, and allow him into our lives. I found out they, not only then, but she was a drug addict before, are doing heroin and crap. She has asked me to throw out the garbage, and only later I realized the needles sticking out that could possibly kill me are drug needles. 
She got in literal knife fights with this man she was seeing, making me walk my young sister to my aunt's because their problems affecting us. She lost the place when I was 14, putting us in a woman's shelter with a nice park beside it. Irresponsibly, she had prescribed medication and took four times the recommended amount right in front of the staff, making the staff worried for us and her. So she's rushed to the hospital and my sister is placed in foster care with my aunt and the same for me and my other aunt. Half a year later, the bee attempts suicide and failed because a cop caught her and saved her. This'll sound morbid, but I wanted him to not find her, but you'll know why soon enough. This attracted pity, and later, my aunt wanted me to pick either foster care or going back with her. I only picked her because everyone else said she deserved someone. Cut to D months, it's been a year, only minor crap happened, but then my grandfather had a failed chemo thing, don't know what happened exactly, but he faded fast. Rest in peace. And everyone visited him at my aunt's house for his final days. Not a week in, my mother finds a drug dealer, might have been a drunk too, gets high and tries to make me get in her car with her. Knowing this was F, I resist. She gets angry and drags me screaming. She falls and crushed a cousin who was sleeping nearby and gets herself arrested because nobody who woke up would let her take me while my younger cousins cried. And ironically, she's the one who called them. Grandpa passes, but because she was a bee, she went back home when she was released from the police and only showed up to the funeral being a mess. I am forced to go home with her, but over the next two months, I get tired of this drug addict BS and make an attempt to leave. But get this, she tries to effing kill me with a hammer. No joke, no hyperbole, this woman does that. I bring in the hammer to the police literally moments after this, but because there's no blood, due to impressive struggling by me and me being young, the bee says this line, No, no I didn't. He is young and he doesn't know what he's saying. They almost buy this and ask if I had anywhere else to stay, and I said no. So they don't know what to do and let her off the hook. Now for the revenge. I leave the next night and she never sees me again. I grab the valuable stuff when she leaves for something and break her TV purposely. I catch sight of her at a beer festival I was waiting through, but she's too drunk and dumb to notice me, and that's the last I saw of her. I found out she only had the place we got because she got child tax benefit, which allowed her money for a kid she had, which she didn't because this was two months later I found this out. I then got it cut off and found out a couple months further she lost the place and became homeless and was never allowed access to the woman's shelter, making her really effed as she would only visit my sister and some others. I've slowly gotten better, left that city so she never gets the chance to see her son again, and my life is okay. This was almost two years ago. In this two years ago, she tried to sick my dad on me, another homeless person, but with rich parents allowing him a little access to stuff, he tried to add me on Facebook. I blocked this. I find she's bothering my sister and tell my poor sister to not say crap. Later, she's bothered and asks me how to get rid of her, and I make her block her on every site and tell her not to let her in her place. Recently, that boyfriend she was with, the drug guy, died of a carfentanil overdose, and she's alone. OP, I hope you stay strong. I hope you find somebody to help you get through life, and I hope that you have absolutely no contact with that woman. Now, I picked up on something interesting in this story because OP mentioned the hockey team called the Peets. Well, I know where that town is, and it's about an hour and a half from where I live. Crazy that one of these is so close by. Check out both OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.